Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Refactoring UI. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a submission from Aaron Francis. Aaron is the CTO at a company called Resolute. They're a property tax solution based out of Texas that work on behalf of homeowners. And what makes them so great is that they only get paid if the client gets paid. So I was really happy to help them out with this. Now, Aaron was struggling with the design of their internal tool that's used by the agents and temps, particularly this properties page that you see here. We don't wanna make any major structural changes here. It's important to respect that the team's using this every day and they're really familiar with the current layout. Instead, we just wanna see what we can do with small cosmetic changes to bring this design to the next level. Resolute recently got a facelift on their marketing website. So another goal we're going to try and accomplish is to better align it with the homepage so it's a more cohesive experience internally. So let's get started. So here's the design of the properties page that I recreated in Sketch. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the middle section of this page containing all the forms. Currently, the layout is fluid, causing the form to span the entire width of the page. This might be okay on a smaller laptop monitor, but this page is primarily viewed on extra large monitors, resulting in really long form inputs. It's important to use input length as an affordance. So we're going to start by constraining the middle section, giving it a max width of 960 pixels. And the idea here is that it will always be centered in the viewport between the left nav and the notes on the right. That helps a little bit, but these inputs are still quite long. So a technique I like to do with long forms like this is to give them a two column layout. This is something I saw for the first time on Shopify's dashboard where they use the section label to occupy the first third of the layout, and then they put the form on the remaining two thirds of the layout. So we're going to apply that treatment to our design. And not only does this help condense and center the form, making it a bit more manageable, but it also creates a space that can be used to add informative text to provide a little more clarity to the user. And this is great because even though the temps are quite qualified, the system is brand new to them and it's huge and proprietary. So these additional notes are quite helpful. Now, when I apply this treatment, it eliminates the need for the top bar that contained the title because all of the white space is now doing the job of putting emphasis on it. But the bar did play an important role of distinguishing the panels a bit better and bringing focus to the page. So we're going to add a top border, nothing too heavy like it was before, just a small hint, in this case, four pixels high. And not only does this help distinguish the panels a bit better, but it's a nice way to introduce the primary brand color, making it feel more attached to the brand's visual identity. This is already looking much cleaner, but as I mentioned at the beginning, we want to see what we can do to better align this to the new website. So I was able to find these inputs on the sign-in form and I noticed that they look much taller than the ones that are currently being used in this form. So we're gonna give them the same treatment. Now I wanna point out the space in between the inputs here. Right now the label is almost as close to the input above it as it is to the one below. It's not guaranteed, but I will often make the space between the input and the label below it about half the size of the input itself. So in this case, the input is 40 pixels. So I'm going to give it a bottom margin of 24 pixels. Okay, let's move on to the flags and the appointment of agents sections. The entire layout of these sections is looking quite messy. So we're gonna see what we can do to clean it up a bit. Both of these sections are pretty similar. So let's start with the flag section and see what changes we make are transferable to the AOA section. So the first thing that I find interesting is that this information is sort of in a table layout with these headings, but sort of falls apart with the flags in the notes. So we're gonna give the notes their own column and we're gonna make the person who applied the flag part of the notes, but give it a lighter text treatment to give it some distinction and also de-emphasize it because it's less important. And we're also going to add a two pixel bottom border to the table header. Let's now look at the styling of the flags. Right now they're contained in this pill shaped box, which is a common visual treatment for tags. And if you search tags on Dribbble, you'll see what I mean. And this works nicely when you have several tags grouped together to give them the distinction as well as the appearance of a clickable target. But for this example, it's not a grouping of flags. You would only have one flag per row. So this can be a bit confusing. And another thing I should mention is that flags never get removed. They just get marked as complete and archived. But the X icon on these may create the expectation that the tag is getting deleted completely. So what we're gonna do is remove this treatment from the flag and add a checkbox to the left side of the row, which will be used to mark flags as complete. So that looks a bit cleaner and a bit clearer, but unfortunately when doing that, we lost the red treatment of this particular flag that indicated the severity of it. 
So we could make the text red and bold it to highlight it a bit better, but it still doesn't have quite the same impact that the red box did before we removed it. So in addition to the bold red text, we're going to add a small red dot to the left of the text to give it a little more emphasis. Let's also take a look at this show more tags link right here. Right now, it doesn't really feel attached to the table. It's just sort of floating there. So we're going to add a border to the bottom of this and left align the link to it. And instead of making it a blue link, we're going to make it darker and bolder and put it on a subtle gray background. That way, the subtle gray helps it feel like a de-emphasized extension of the table, while the dark bold text still manages to make it look clickable. Okay, so this table treatment is looking much more organized, but how do we apply a new flag? Well, right now it's tucked up in the corner with 12 pixel size text. So let's start by moving it to a more obvious location. But before we do that, I want to point out that these lists never get very long. In fact, what you see here is probably quite accurate. You might see one or two flags attached to a property. So I think it would be safe to make this button in line with the list and not worry about it getting buried. This may even encourage the users to scan the list of flags first to make sure what they want to add isn't already there. We're also going to bold and darken the text as well as make it uppercase to make it a bit clearer. And just to make it more identifiable at a glance, we're going to add a plus icon to the left of it. Okay, so that organizes the flag section much better. And as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna see what ideas we can now transfer to the AOA section. So let's start by organizing this information into a table. So we're gonna have one column for the name of the document and the label that indicates that it's been signed. And we're gonna have another column for the status and finally one for the note and change history. Let's also update the way the dates are displayed here. Right now the dates on the flags and the AOAs are using a different format. So we're gonna make them consistent by showing just the month, day, and year. Okay, let's just add a bottom border to the header here. And we're also going to give the status the same treatment as the flag, as well as move and style the create new AOA action in line like we did with the apply new flag action. Finally, we're going to update the link color here. So it's just a darker version of the brand's color, only because the brand color is inaccessible when on a white background. And that makes it so it has almost an identical treatment as the flags, making both sections much more scannable. Okay, so let's move on to the cancel section. So this is looking pretty good with some of the global changes we've already applied. I'm just going to darken the text and lighten the background of this alert so it's a bit more legible, as well as increase the line height a bit. And I like the small hint of color on the left, but we're going to move it to the top so the placement is consistent with the panels on the page. And this message is pretty important. So just to better highlight the severity of it, we're going to add an icon so it's easier to take in at a glance. Okay, now this button, it's looking a bit clunky and the homepage redesign has a much flatter treatment. So we're gonna give this button the same style. And the red being used here is looking a bit rich, which is fine, but the colors on the website and on this page have a bit of a washed out look, making this button look a bit out of place. So we're gonna slightly reduce the brightness and saturation of it. Not so much that it doesn't stand out as the primary high severity action that it is, but just enough so it blends in with the page. Now, the button is right aligned here, which is fine, but it feels like it's sort of just floating there because the way the text wraps above it. So what I like to do with right aligned buttons is add a border that spans the entire width of the form. Adding borders like this is a nice little trick to make detached content feel more attached without having to put items in a box. Okay, and now I'm just gonna clean up these inputs by giving them a little more space. Okay, so that wraps up the middle section of this design. So let's take a look at the notes section on the right side. So these notes are actually quite heavily used. They help anyone new who comes to the page and needs to review the past updates. But right now the notes feel quite de-emphasized. So we're gonna give it a white background and position it at the tops to help the notes pop off the page, making it feel like it's its own section. Now, note creation is important, but it's even more important that the already posted notes are clear but right now they're really easy to miss. So we're gonna emphasize the already posted notes by de-emphasizing the create note input and options. And we're gonna do that by using progressive disclosure. So we're gonna remove this input and these options and add a button to the top right. And for consistency, we're going to give the text a similar styling treatment as the create actions used on the flags and AOAs. And the idea here is that when you click it, it would expand in line and present the same options. 
Now let's go ahead and style this section. So let's start with the tabs. The tabs are nice here, but the style feels a bit out of place with some of the other visual ideas we've been introducing. Now, if you search on Dribbble, you'll see another common way to style tabs is to use a heavy bottom color border to highlight the active state. And this would align nicely with the top orders that we've introduced on the panels. This treatment also gives us a little more room to work with. So we're also going to increase the size a bit and distribute them evenly in the sidebar. Okay, let's move on to the notes. Right now they're looking messy, so let's structure these a little bit differently. Well, I wanna quickly point out that the notes can be categorized by notes or audits, and they're indicated with this icon and text on the bottom left corner. I think it would be nice to highlight that a bit better. So what we're going to do is instead of using the container to distinguish these notes, we're gonna make these icons bigger and align them to the left of the notes. So they sort of act as a bulleted list. We're also going to put the name and date beside each other, separating them with a dot and move them below the note as their secondary pieces of information. And we really want the note itself to align with the icon. Okay, so that's looking much cleaner. We're almost done here. So let's just review the left navigation and make a few adjustments. So let's first bump up the size of the text and increase the space between as it's pretty small and sort of hard to read. And I also want to update the icons. The icons currently being used are a set I actually designed a while ago called Zondicons. This is a free set you can get at zondicons.com. Now I am happy to see an icon set that I designed being used on this site, but when I designed this set, the goal I had in mind was to give them a neutral and unopinionated look. But one of our goals with this design is to align it with the home page. And when I was clicking around, I saw these illustrations that have a very playful look to them with their dark outlines and rounded corners. So it might be more fitting if we use a set that has similar characteristics. So another set of mine called Horocons UI shares some of these attributes. And you can get these icons for free on my website at steveshoger.com. I've already introduced this set in other parts of the design, like the right sidebar and the alert. So we're gonna do the same here. These are looking nice, but they still feel a bit heavy next to the text. So we're gonna make them a bit lighter so they feel more balanced and do a better job at just being supportive to the text, not take over. Let's also give our active state a treatment. Since we're using this border on the tabs on the right, let's do something similar with this. Let's add a four pixel border on the left and make the background color white, as well as make the icon our primary brand color. And we're also going to add a border to the right to contain the navigation but also to help the middle section feel centered between each sidebar. Now, I forgot to include this in the sketch file, but this border dividing the navigation is to separate the frequently used links with the infrequently used links. So we're gonna add that back in. Okay, let's just clean up this top section now. First, let's align the breadcrumbs to the left. We want them to be snug with the navigation and the search and not interfering with the title. We're also going to increase the size a bit and change the text color to our new link style. Now, unfortunately, this creates some awkward alignment, so we're going to add a border that spans the entire width. This makes it feel like an extension to the surrounding UI and not the main content area. Now, this icon is here because this page looks awfully similar to the contacts pages. So it was requested by the team to add this icon for distinction. So we're just going to update this with the new style and add color to make it stand out a bit more. In this bold title, it's a bit stronger than it needs to be and taking focus away from the content of the page. And the font size is already doing enough work, so we're gonna make this a normal weight. And finally, this active status, it blends in with the title because it has the same treatment. So to make it stand out a bit more as a status that changes, we're going to put it in a pill styled badge and give it a background color. Okay, last but not least, we're going to take a look at the top bar. This search is probably the most important thing on the application. When a client calls in, the temp is likely going to use this to search with the information that's provided to them. So we really want this to stand out way more than it currently does. So instead of using the white background that's used everywhere else, we're going to use the primary brand color we're using and invert the logo. One thing I like to do when I have inputs on a dark background like this is to saturate it a bit so it doesn't look so intense. This is also nice because it allows us to use the white as an obvious focus state. And again, let's update the icon here so it's the same set as everywhere else. 
Okay, so that pretty much covers everything, but there's just one last thing I wanna take a look at, and that is the font. Right now, the design is using Helvetica or Arial, depending on the operating system. Now, these are great because they're web safe fonts, so they're efficient, but they also are a bit dated. Now, I could update the font to the one that's used on the website. It's a sans serif font called National by the Klim Type Foundry. It would look really nice, but it would also increase the loading time, something we don't want for an internal application. We want this to be efficient. One thing I've been seeing popping up in recent years is the adoption of the system font stack. Companies like GitHub and Shopify have been using it for their in-app experience while still using the brand font for the marketing material. Now the fonts do look really good, but more importantly, they're efficient, so they require no download time. So we're gonna use it for this design. In this case, we're gonna use Apple's San Francisco. Okay, so that pretty much wraps everything up. So let's just do a comparison of the before and after. If you enjoyed the tips in this video, be sure to check out my Twitter page at Steve Shoker, where I regularly share practical tips that you can apply to your own design. And if you want to see the sketch files to the design in the video, I've included a link to download the sketch files in the description. And you can check out the site Resolute at ResolutePTS.com. And if you enjoyed this video and want to receive updates when more content like this is published, be sure to sign up at ReFactoringUI.com.